What's up YouTube? It's Amy at Chesapeake Homestead and we're back this week to talk to our new-ish gardeners all about seeds. We've got a lot of information packed into today's video. We're going to get our hands dirty with the seed starting jargon and lingo that you're bound to hear. We're going to talk about when, where, how to plant, and we're also going to go over some seed companies, including some BIPOC owned seed companies that you're not going to want to miss. Stay tuned. First up is lingo. Now when you start going down the bunny trail, the rabbit hole, <laughs> when you start looking into seeds, you will find that the whole world opens up to you in terms of varieties and types, these beautiful plants that you never knew existed because the only thing you've known is what you've seen at the store. It becomes very easy to get addicted to getting seeds. You see something, you're like, oh, that would be cool to grow, that would be cool to grow. The next thing you know, you've got 100 different seed packets and know where to plant them. <laughs> <laughs> but when you start looking into seed, there are certain terms that you're going to hear. The first term is open pollinated. Open pollinated simply means that they are pollinated naturally, whether that is from bird, insect, wind, and even human. The pollination process was a natural one. Because there are no restrictions on the flow of pollen between individual plants, the open pollinated plants are more genetically diverse. But it also allows for plants to slowly adapt to the local growing conditions and climate year after year. The next term you're gonna hear is heirloom. Heirloom seeds are those that have been around for 50 or more years. At least that is the most widely accepted data point is that 50 year mark. So if it's been here and stable for 50 years or longer, regardless of its source, it is considered an heirloom seed. Heirlooms are the seeds that have been passed down from generation to generation. Some come with the most beautiful stories that you can read about in seed catalogs and I encourage you to do so if you ever get your hands on like a Baker Creek Rare Seeds catalog. They are just beautiful stories. As far as saving seeds go, heirloom seeds you can save because they are stable and once you plant that seed the next year, the plant that comes up is going to be what you expect or very similar to it. Let's move on to hybrid seeds. Now hybrid seeds and GMO seeds, which we'll talk about in a minute, are not the same thing. Hybrid seeds are from fruit that has been cross-pollinated. You have a plant A with a specific attribute and another variety, plant B, that has a specific attribute. You cross-pollinate them in hope to produce a plant that carries both of those desirable attributes. It's very similar to how people have bred dogs, for example, like the Labradoodle from a Labrador and a Poodle, or these really cute ones that we've been oogling over the last few weeks, palm skis from a Pomeranian and a Husky. They are so cute. Anyways, that's a similar concept to cross-pollination. The fruit that comes from hybrid plants is gonna be very similar to what you find in a grocery store. So the tomatoes tend to be more perfectly round. The zucchinis are always gonna be green. The squashes are gonna be yellow. It's, and saving seeds from a hybrid plant may actually result in a less than optimal or less than desirable product. Now, the age-old debate of which is better, heirloom or hybrid, that's up to you. I would encourage you to try both. We stuck to heirloom seeds for the first two years. This coming growing season, we made the decision to incorporate some hybrid tomatoes into our tomato selections in hopes that we might get a more predictable yield that will help with our preservation needs. Last up but not least is GMO seeds. GMO seeds are a completely different category. They are specifically bred in a laboratory through a scientific method like gene splicing. 
they take a different species that has a certain characteristic and insert those genes into the plant in hopes that that will produce plants that have certain traits or characteristics. Genetic modification is done to increase the resistance to disease or herbicide to make harvesting more efficient. Wherever you stand on the GMO debate, because there are some people that are for GMO type products, I just want to assure you that those seeds are typically used in commercial production and by big ag. GMO seeds are not something you're gonna find in a retail store for the home grower. Let's talk about the seeds that are available to home growers and specifically some places to find seeds this year. Now this year, seeds are short. I would encourage you to first check out local garden centers. I'm a huge believer in supporting local businesses and our local economies. And so I would encourage you to first check what is available to you locally. Even if you are heading to like a Home Depot or a Walmart or a Dollar Tree, look to see what is available to you locally. For online seed sales, some of the places we go to, Johnny Seeds, Botanical Interests, MI Gardener, Baker Creek is a big one that you'll hear people talk about a lot on YouTube. Also, I wanted to share with you some BIPOC owned seed companies that you should definitely check out. First up is Seed Mail company. Stephanie is doing awesome things with her young company. She has a vision of making growing and gardening accessible to all. Next up is Kitazawa Seed. Kitazawa was started in 1917 in California by Jijiu Kitazawa, who immigrated here from Japan. They provide a large selection of Asian vegetables. So if you are into that from a culinary perspective, I would definitely look at what varieties they have available. Native Seeds is another company and their mission is to conserve and promote the arid adapted crop diversity of the Southwest in support of sustainable farming and food security. Now finally, this is the company that we bought from this year and that is Renaissance Farm. You guys, they have the most incredible selection of tomatoes. Tomatoes of the likes that I have never seen before. It is so incredible. I got so much joy just from scrolling through their website and picking out our tomatoes for this year. All of these companies will be linked in the show notes below. Now, once you have your seeds, what do you do with them? The answer to this question is going to depend on where you live and what seeds you have. Do you remember that first week when we went to the Farmer's Almanac page and we looked up our grow zone? If there are certain seeds that you have or you're thinking about buying, go back to that website and make notes of when and how you should start those seeds. The other place that you're gonna wanna look for your information is directly on your seed packet. On the seed packet, you will find information about when to start. Usually it will state how many weeks before or after the frost date and also whether they recommend indoors or directly sowing or planting outside. It will tell you how deep to plant your seeds, how many days to germinate and or how many days to harvest. It will also tell you your spacing. I am not going to cover the entire process of planting seeds. I have already created a video for this last year. I encourage you to go watch it. I will say that in preparing to plant your seeds, you're going to want a good seed starting mix. You will need a container to plant in. Now this can be a traditional 10 by 20 seed starting tray. It could be jiffy pots or it could be recycled materials like red solo cups or the little plastic berry containers that you get from grocery stores. You don't need to spend a lot of money to do this. You can look around and see what you have and how you can reuse and recycle it. If you're starting those seeds indoor, I would recommend a heat mat. For many things, they like the soil to be a little warmer and the heat mat helps that happen. Grow lights or shop lights are a nice thing to have but a sunny window will also work when it comes to just starting seeds in general. I think that radish is a great 
seed to try. It's a nice round seed, easy to hold, and it's something you can plant outside. There's 21 to 32 days before you're ready to harvest your radish. That is as instant as gratification is gonna get when it comes to garden. The other seed that I would recommend you grow and try are tomatoes. They have a lot of give and are somewhat forgiving. The last one, cucumbers are delicious they grow relatively easy you can find a good variety their use is very versatile you can eat them fresh you can pickle them either refrigerator pickles or bread and butter pickles if you've got kids three seeds that i highly recommend with kids are going to be again the radish seeds because they have such a quick turnaround and also kids love to pull stuff out of the ground. Some pea sowing, because kids love peas. They are nice big seeds, easy to hold and easy for the kids to plant. And they have a relatively quick turnaround as well. And last but not least are sunflower seeds. Again, I think that they are a good size for kids to hold and they germinate fairly well. They are beautiful and fun to look at. Plus, if you can save the seed heads, then the kids will have some sunflower seeds that they can eat or that they can feed the birds at the end of the season. What are you gonna tell me? <laughs> what kind of seeds do you like to plant? My seeds like to plant is flowers. Flowers? Oh, yeah, we plant lots of flowers, don't we? Mm -hmm. And you're my seed helper, aren't you? Yesterday, yesterday we grow a we grow a big flower yesterday, right? Last year. That was last year. And yeah, do you know what that flower was called? What? Sunflowers. Mm -hmm. And you helped me plant them, didn't yeah. you? And I love sunflowers. You like sunflowers? Yeah. Do you, well, it was really what color were they? Um, Do you remember? Yellow. Yellow, that's right. Okay, when, let me finish this video. We Hashtag mom life. There you have it, my rundown of all things seeds. I thank you guys so much for joining me each week on this beginner series. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you can be notified of the next video. And if there's anyone out there that you think would enjoy this sort of content, make sure you share it with them so that they can get in on these beginner tips as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.